Sebastian Brown is a psychic tarot card reader who has had some truly fascinating experiences in his line of work. With his unique gift, he is able to tap into the hidden energies and secrets of the universe through the ancient art of tarot. Not only does he offer guidance and insight to his clients, but he also solves mysteries and uncovers truths that have been buried for centuries. As a tarot card reader, Sebastian has had the opportunity to work with people from all walks of life. He has helped clients navigate difficult relationships, make important career decisions, and even find missing objects. But some of his most mind-blowing experiences have come from solving mysteries and uncovering long-lost secrets. Miss Jenny Hewitt was not an ordinary girl. She had a special gift that few people possessed, the ability to sense and manipulate the psychic energies that pervaded the world. She could read minds, move objects with her thoughts, and even see glimpses of the future. She was also the girlfriend of Sebastian Brown, a renowned paranormal investigator and adventurer who shared her abilities. Together, they formed a formidable team that explored the mysteries and dangers of the supernatural realm. They traveled across the globe, seeking out haunted places, ancient relics, and hidden secrets. They faced many foes, both human and inhuman, who sought to use or abuse their powers for evil purposes. They also made many friends and allies, who helped them along their quests. This is a collection of their stories, told from Jenny's perspective. It chronicles their adventures, their challenges, and their romance. It reveals how they met, how they fell in love, and how they grew as individuals and as a couple. It also showcases their amazing psychic feats and their incredible discoveries. If you are a fan of paranormal fiction, you will enjoy watching their videos together. You will be immersed in a world of wonder and mystery, where anything is possible. You will also get to know Jenny and Sebastian, two remarkable characters who will inspire you with their courage, intelligence, and passion. Join them as they embark on their thrilling journeys and witness their extraordinary exploits. These are the stories of Miss Jenny Hewitt and Sebastian Brown, Psychic Adventurers. Welcome to my Chronicles, and another episode of The Paranormal Detective, where I share some of the most fascinating and mind-blowing stories from my adventures as a psychic tarot card reader. My name is Sebastian Brown, and I have a special gift, I can tap into the hidden energies and secrets of the universe through the ancient art of tarot. I use my cards not only to offer guidance and insight to my clients, but also to solve mysteries and uncover truths that have been buried for centuries. In this first episode, I will tell you about one of my most recent cases, which involved a mysterious woman, a haunted mansion, and a dark secret from the past. It all started when I received a phone call from a woman named Miranda, who claimed to be an old friend of mine. She said she needed my help urgently, and asked me to meet her at a remote location in the countryside. She sounded scared and desperate, so I agreed to go. I packed my bag with some essential tools for my job, a flashlight, a camera, a recorder, a notebook, and a silver dagger. You never know what you might encounter in this line of work. I drove for about two hours until I reached the address that Miranda had given me. It was a huge mansion surrounded by a high wall and a wrought iron gate. The place looked old and abandoned, with broken windows and overgrown weeds. I parked my car outside the huge gate and made my way up the driveway towards the entrance and a second gate. There was no sign of Miranda or anyone else. I rang a bell that hung down from the gate and waited for a few seconds. Nothing happened. 
I tried again, but still no answer. I pushed the gate and it opened with a loud creak. I stepped inside and walked along the gravel path that led to the front door. The mansion was even more impressive up close, but also more sinister. It had a gothic style, with pointed arches, gargoyles, and stained glass windows. It looked like something out of a horror movie. I reached the door and knocked on it. There was no response, so I tried the handle and it turned easily. I opened the door and entered the mansion. It was dark and silent inside. The only light came from the moon that shone through the windows. I took out my flashlight and turned it on. I saw a large hall with a grand staircase that led to the upper floor. There were paintings on the walls, portraits of people who looked stern and unhappy. There were also some statues and vases that looked expensive and antique. I called out Miranda's name, but there was no reply. I wondered where she was and why she had asked me to come here. What was going on? I decided to explore the mansion and looked for clues. Maybe I would find Miranda or something else that would explain this mystery. I walked up the stairs and entered the first room on the right. It was a library filled with shelves of books that covered every topic imaginable, history, science, philosophy, literature, art, religion, occultism. There was also a fireplace, a desk, and a sofa. The room smelled of dust and old paper. I scanned the titles of the books, looking for anything that might be relevant to my case. I noticed that some of them were very rare and valuable editions, such as the Necronomicon by Abdul Alhazrid, the Book of Enoch by Enoch, and the Key of Solomon by King Solomon. These were books that dealt with ancient secrets and forbidden knowledge, books that could be dangerous in the wrong hands. I wondered who owned this mansion and what they were doing with these books. Were they interested in the paranormal or were they involved in something darker? I decided to take some pictures of the books for later reference. I took out my camera and snapped some shots of the shelves. As I did so, I heard a faint noise behind me. It sounded like someone whispering in my ear. Who are you? I turned around quickly, but there was no one there. I felt a chill run down my spine. Hello? I said nervously. There was no answer. I shone my flashlight around the room, but I saw nothing unusual. Is anyone there? I asked again. Still nothing. I shrugged it off as my imagination playing tricks on me. Maybe it was just the wind or some pipes making noise. I continued taking pictures of the books until I had covered every shelf in the room. Then I moved on to the next room. Miranda was waiting for me at the door, and she looked pale and nervous. She hugged me and thanked me for coming, then led me deeper inside the mansion. She told me that she had inherited the mansion from her late uncle, who had died under mysterious circumstances. She said that ever since she moved in, she had been experiencing strange and terrifying phenomena, noises, voices, apparitions, objects moving by themselves. She said she felt like she was not alone in the house, and that something evil was lurking in the shadows. She had tried to contact several paranormal investigators, but none of them had agreed to help her. She said she remembered that I was a psychic tarot card reader, and that I was her last hope. I agreed to help her, and asked her to show me around the rest of the mansion. As we walked through the dark and dusty corridors, I felt a cold and oppressive atmosphere. I could sense that there was something wrong with this place, something that went beyond the normal. 
I took out my tarot deck and shuffled it, asking for guidance from the cards as Miranda opened a door to a study room with small tables and several sets of chairs stacked against three walls. I drew three cards and laid them down on a small table, placing them from left to right in a past present future spread. The tower, upright, the devil, also upright, and death, reversed. As I revealed each of the cards it was obvious the mansion's history was playing a vital part in this reading. These three cards were some of the most negative and ominous cards in the deck, indicating danger, destruction, temptation, and transformation, meaning that Miranda could be in some possible kind of great danger, and that there was a powerful and malevolent force at work in the mansion. They also meant that there was a hidden connection between Miranda and the mansion, something that had to do with her past. The tower card was placed in the past position, indicating some kind of upset or disruption that occurred in Miranda's past yet also linked to the mansions too. I told Miranda what the cards meant, and asked her if she knew anything about the history of the mansion or her uncle. She said she didn't know much, only that her uncle had been a wealthy and eccentric collector of antiques and artifacts from all over the world. He had been obsessed with finding rare and ancient items related to esoteric knowledge and occult practices. He had spent most of his time in his private library, where he kept his most prized possessions. I asked her if we could see the library, hoping to find some clues there. She nodded and led me to a large wooden door at the end of a hallway. She opened it with a large iron key and we entered the library. The library was huge and filled with shelves of books, scrolls, manuscripts, maps, paintings, statues, and other objects. It looked like a museum of occult history. I felt a surge of curiosity and excitement as I scanned the room. There were so many things to see and explore. But before I could do anything else, I noticed something that caught my eye, a large wooden table in the center of the room. On it was a velvet cloth with a strange symbol embroidered on it. And on top of the cloth was a tarot deck. I felt a chill run down my spine as I recognized the deck. It was one of the most rare and powerful tarot decks in existence, the Thoth Tarot Deck. The Thoth Tarot deck was created by Aleister Crowley, one of the most famous and controversial occultists of all time. He claimed to have received the deck from a mysterious entity called Iwas, who communicated with him through a series of visions. The deck was based on ancient Egyptian mythology and symbolism, as well as Crowley's own system of magic. The deck was said to contain secrets of creation and destruction, life and death, light and darkness. I had always wanted to see the original Thoth Tarot deck in person, but I never thought I would find it here. I wondered how Miranda's uncle had acquired it. To be continued.